want to hear rejoinders. <laughs> well, I mean, rejoinders slash uh, supplements. Um, so here makes an, an extremely important point when he points out that if you define the aggression principle in terms of property rights, you then have the question, what do you mean by rights? And how do you know that you've got that particular right? And you will tend to expound the right in terms, again, of non-aggression. Now, uh, let's see. Well, we don't have a blackboard here. There's only one over there. But um, um, theories of this kind of must, of course, go back to remark discussions about human nature. That's the principle. Uh, but our general problem when we're doing moral theory, which we're doing a, a, an aspect of moral theory here, um, our general problem is how do we find a principle that makes sense to everybody? We've got all these people out here, and what we're trying to do is to put forward a principle for the regulation of everybody's conduct. Right? A claim that something or other is right or wrong is a claim that everybody is to do this or refrain from doing this sort of thing. And the question is, um, why, if I put forward a proposal like this, why should anybody else accept it? Now, let me uh, quickly run through, I think, a, a basic division, which I think is very useful for everybody in discussing uh, political and moral philosophy. Um, I divide theories of government into three. And it, it comes, by the way, you can trace it in, back to characters in Plato's Republic, those of you who are uh, into that sort of thing. Uh, Plato's Republic is a lovely book, and uh, there are three characters in, in particular who are identified with these three views. The first is Thrasymachus, who says, justice is nothing but the interest of the stronger party. Now, in a sense, this is the rejection of moral theory as we usually understand it. Uh, this view forthrightly says that government is a gang of thieves. And the thing to do is to take as much as you can. That's the point of being in the government. Um, this is, roughly speaking, the political scientist view of government. Um, and of course, it's, uh, it's disconcertingly plausible as such a theory. I mean, the best way to look at the state is it's a bunch of people who are attempting to extract as much as possible from the governing population. Well, I guess for some of us, whom I take it we all reject as an actual moral theorist, I mean, um, it's uh, practically insane to regard that as a, as a morality. Um, we have Plato himself, who of course said that what government ought to be doing is promoting the good of the subject. Now, in a broad way, we all agree with this, uh, that, that what government ought to be doing is uh, uh, making life better for us, rather than for the government. Right? So instead of extracting from us, they ought to be doing whatever they can to enable us to live the best lives that we can. Uh, this, very broadly, is the set of views that I call political conservatism. Now, um, the word conservative isn't used in a very precise way, to put it mildly, in political context. Uh, but what I mean by it is the following. When Plato says what government ought to be doing is to promoting, be promoting the good of everybody, of course the question arises, well, what is the good of everybody? And the trouble is that Plato has a view about this. Now, whatever the view is, it doesn't matter very much, except that it isn't part of his view of what's good for everyone, but the individual whose good it is, has anything to say about it fundamentally. That is to say, Plato, the pointy-headed uh, philosopher, tells us what's good for us, and then he runs the government with a view to promoting that. Uh, the classic ideal example of a law of this type, and there are oodles of laws of this type, and most laws are laws of this type, but consider the laws against drugs. This is absolutely a view that the way you ought to be living your life is such and such, and of course you don't agree with this, but that's just too bad for you, you're wrong. You're wrong about how you ought to live your life. Um, that's what the conservative says, and he marshals the forces of the government behind promoting that view. Then finally, there is the liberal view, again in the broad sense of the term, not, not to be confused with uh, capital L 
uh, liberals such as the political party of that name in Canada. Now, the essence of liberalism is to agree with Plato that government ought to be promoting the good of the people, but to disagree with Plato about how that works. The correct view is we ought to be promoting the good of people on their own view of what's good for themselves. Now here we get back to human nature. So what's a human being, roughly speaking, for these purposes? Answer, we are a bundle of two things. On the one hand, what economists call utilities. Uh, these are, you know, happinesses, the things that, that please us, pleasures, that sort of thing. And on the other hand, a bundle of powers, things that we are able to do. Now, we do the things we do, roughly speaking, in order to promote our utility. Some people do what they do in order to promote not only their own utility, but the utility of others. And if they're Plato, uh, these people are very dangerous. <laughs> um, there's nothing necessarily egotistical or selfish about man. But we all have our own uh, view about what's good. Um, and we act on that view, whatever it is, and whether or not it includes promoting the good of some others while you're at it. Of course, there's a core. Um, you yourself have to be interested in yourself. If you aren't, then you're not going to last long enough to be promoting the good of anybody else, if that's what you're interested in. Uh, note that you do not necessarily have to be interested in wealth in the usual sense of the word. Most people are. Most people would rather be richer than poorer, but some wouldn't. There, there is such a thing as voluntary poverty. And notice that that's perfectly OK on our view. Why is it OK on our view? Because it's OK on your view as regards what you should do with yourself. So the individual's view of what's good for himself is what we take to be uh, the good for individuals. And that's what the person in question uses his powers in order to promote. Now, he doesn't get to use the powers of other people. So now, um, the trouble with the theory known as utilitarianism, as I came to see after being a utilitarian for many years, is that the utilitarian detaches the individual's powers from his utilities. And he says it doesn't matter who promotes the utilities. Those utilities should be taken to be good by anybody, no matter who. And so if we can promote Jones's utility by having Smith do something, then that's what we should do. Well, sorry, Smith might think otherwise. And the question is, who is right? And our answer is, of course, Smith. That is to say, we're taking it that the individual should be in control of himself. He should devote his powers to whatever he wants to devote them to, with, of course, within the uh, restrictions that our theory imposes, because everybody else, we are going to say, has the right to do exactly um, the same thing. So where homesteading comes in is the following. First, consider uh, your mind. Well, what makes it yours? Well, there's going to be a biological answer to that in a very general sort of way, as Pierre uh, uh, implies. You're born in such a way that uh, as soon as you start being aware of anything or other, you're aware that there's this thing, your body, which moves in certain respects in response to commands that you issue to it. And it, and, it, and it tags along with you when you do those things, etc. And we soon learn that, we, yes, we've got a body. And what makes it ours is simply that it is, in fact, connected to us. That's what makes it ours in the sense, uh, uh, um, in a sense that we need to make a distinction about. The, the distinction I'll make is between possession and ownership. Now, you possess whatever you happen to be in control of for whatever reason. When somebody robs your car, he now possesses it. But he doesn't own it. Ownership is a moral notion or a legal notion, uh, primarily moral. Ownership is a justified uh, possession. It's allowed or permitted possession. OK, question. What is it that underwrites legitimate possession? Why is it OK for you to be in possession of a certain thing and not others? This is a very profound question. And in my, uh, I have come to the view that there is only one general way to answer this question for uh, moral purposes. Um, and that's the way that's known as the social contract, very broadly. Now, the social contract says this. 
The rules for what's right and wrong are the rules that are rationally put forward by everybody in view of the existence of, everybody, of themselves and everybody else. So we take all of these people and we ask, you know, what is it that we could all agree on in the way of rules calling for restrictions on our behavior? Now, of course, at one end of the spectrum, you have people who might claim to be in favor of no rules at all. Those are the people who live in what Hobbes calls the state of nature, which he, I think, correctly characterized as a condition in which life was going to be miserable, solitary, nasty, brutish, and short. <coughs> it would be a condition of universal war of everybody against everybody. If anybody actually claims to be in favor of that, there's a very simple answer, and that is, bang. I mean, if you've declared war on everybody, then you've said, you all have the right to shoot me. There are no restrictions. And so what we should do is do it and get hope with it. <laughs> he can't really mean it. I mean, people do claim to say things like this, but. Uh, it is not a believable claim at the individual uh, uh, level. Everybody else, which is, I think, essentially everybody, sees the value of peace. That is, we would prefer that other people not kill us. Well, more generally, we would prefer that they not do things which um, restrict, which, which reduce uh, the goodness of our life as we see it insofar as we are able to live it uh, ourselves. And so, by the way, the reply to um, a lot of criticism about the word harm is that uh, the claim that I'm harming you when I undercut your business is using the wrong baseline. I'm not harming you in the way I would if I shot you, for example, or burned your store down. That would be that would be harm in the in the proper sense of the word, and of course is uh, forbidden. Uh, so now to get <clears throat> um, about homesteading. Um, we homestead in our bodies. Here we are. I mean, we, they just, there they are. And we start doing things in the world. And Locke came up with a brilliant idea, somewhat misleadingly described in terms of mixing your labor with the world, although you could see what he was getting at. But the point is, we start doing stuff out there. We start using the world. And so long as nobody else has got there first, nobody else is already using it, then we are harming nobody. We are interfering with nobody's liberty when we do this. Um, within this, within the restriction that uh, you can't invade anybody else, you can't impose on the life of anybody else as he sees it. You can do whatever you like. It's the general uh, idea that I think generates property rights from liberty, and that is the homesteading principle that I got there first is a sufficient condition so long as the there I got to first was owned by nobody else. And that's what first means. As, soon as, it, as long as it was, then you do what you want with it. Now, of course, from there on, that's the theory of what's called original acquisition. From there on, property ownership is always by transfer. Either you give it away to somebody that you want to give it to, or you make a deal with somebody else and you give it to him on condition that he gives something uh, to you. Um, so it's the uh, uh, aspect of individuals uh, sanctioning or approving or agreeing to uh, the transaction <coughs> that's fundamental. That, that's the bottom line consideration in utilitarian, I mean, in libertarianism. And the problem with all the other theories of government is that they cross that line. They feel free to interfere in your lives on terms which you don't accept, but they do it anyway. Uh, we, do we detect Thrasymachus at work? Well, we detect either Thrasymachus or we detect Plato, the, the big nanny, um, at work here. And the reason for objecting to that is simply that you're you. You're not somebody else. Why should you accept rule by somebody who isn't you uh, over your life is the basic question. And the answer is there isn't any good reason for that. So 